This week leaves everything on the line. The final matchups of the season with many seats still open for grabs. The NFL has conveniently placed the unimportant games in the first time slot with many anuses starting to clench around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's get the first batch out of the way quickly. Green Bay may have had a disastrous season, but this can be a bow to wrap over Toxic Sludge. Playing Detroit at Lambeau should be good closure. What the Packerina ended up giving their fans was an uninspired punch in the mouth. The Packers straight up checked out. Once Aaron Rodgers escaped from battle due to a concussion, Green Bay was banished to the lion's den. As Detroit destroys whatever semblance of a tank they may have had, they at least get the pride of sweeping the hated Packers. In reality, this means nothing, but it's always good to laugh at them. Aaron Rodgers wants milk toast. the coaches, the Packers want to interview Jim Caldwell and the cliché master? Oh, God. The football gods have blessed this game. Teddy Bridgewater is back. To understand what that guy has been through over the past few years with nearly being unable to walk is a testament of human will. If it weren't for a certain QB for the Colts, I'd be handing him comeback player of the year. It doesn't matter at all if the Saints were destroyed and the Panthers finally ended their disastrous losing streak. This is a feel-good moment where there was nothing to play for. At least Cam won't get another broom this year. And you're also keeping Riverboat Ron after such a collapse. Should we call this a good thing or not? A farewell to both a disappointing season and a legend for the Bills. Kyle Williams is hanging up the shoulder pads after 13 years of service to mediocrity. The time has come to let him go out with a bang. Miami will help with that in every way they can. If this was Ryan Tannehill's final game in a Dolphin uniform, he sure reinforced his reputation of not being able to play in big situations. Josh Allen took a Mack truck and just ravaged Miami's defense all game long. But hey, at least you'll get revenge via Kiko Alonso. Some culture change you got down there, guys. Spineless fucking pukes. There's nothing to say here, the butt fumble did their traditional stick of playing dress up as a football team. The Sheriff of Nottingham robs from the poor to give to the rich of the division. The Patriots may have a lot of question marks heading into the postseason, but they showed no mercy under the home confines of Gillette Stadium. In fact, they get an extra pick-me-up under the mistletoe. Another first round bye. They may be weaker than they've been in years, but they are still a legitimate threat. I'll believe they're dead when I see it for myself. As I foolishly believe, Houston does not have the AFC South locked up just yet. They must first go through hashtag Saxonville at home. It may be a terrible season for them, but the Jags trust their offense back to Lord Bortles. Yep, this is going to be a shit show. Jacksonville couldn't muster a piece of paper on the offensive front as the Texans cruise to victory. And an official AFC South division title. As for the Abbey, there may be more intrigue coming soon. All three heads of the house in Marone, Caldwell, and Coughlin will be staying put. There will be retribution for this treachery. I smell a purge coming. At this rate, I feel that these two teams just want this season to be over with. One team still unable to shake off the Black Sheep label, and another suffering a brutally disappointing season rot with injury. Famous Jameis limited the turnovers and had a very solid game. It's perhaps with games like this that the Buccaneers are giving him another chance next season. Although he will be on very thin ice. As expected, this game was an offensive shootout, thanks to decimated secondaries on both sides. This game was coming down to the wire. Matt Ryan blinks first as he throws an interception, and famous Jameis throws a tasty spiral to his receiver. But the two-point conversion fails. That sounds like Tampa's season, all right. So very close to getting it all together, yet failing to finish. The Falcons win the game, but it only brings closure to a lost season. Now all they can ponder are what-ifs. A truly dark punishment. Time to clean some house. The defensive and special teams coordinators, gone. Sarkeesian and his drunken offense can kindly fuck off too. Pour out a cold one for him. Despite the Cowboys having little to play for, they are only choosing to rest Zeke for this match for needed loading in next week's wildcard game. I guess they needed it because the Giants are giving Dallas a run for their money. Saquon Barkley is putting his name on the map with a 2,000-yard season with his hands and feet. Even old Eli is slinging it like he's facing New England in a Super Bowl again. Dallas is pissing away a meaningless game to the dirt for bragging rights. May we all laugh in unison at this achievement. How about them cowboys? For fuck's sake, Giants, can you not be spineless fucks for once? The one chance you had to do something positive and you piss all over it. What a gutless performance. We'll see you do the same shit next year. Derp. Now that the unimportant shit is out of the way, we get to the games with real playoff implications. First on the ledger, the second seed in the NFC. If the Rams win, they secure a first round bye. If they lose and Chicago wins, the Bears get the bye. 
Who are the Rams playing this week anyway? The 49ers? Yeah, this one is going to get ugly and fast. I think you should get the UN involved with these sort of skirmishes. It devolves into outright genocide. There was so much destruction wrought on the field that you'd think we traveled back in time to the Roman Colosseum. LA could have sneezed on a 49er and somehow turned it into a defensive stop. It was that bad. As a result of such annihilation, the Rams get the second seed. Enjoy your week off, boys. Another important event is taking place further north. A chance for the Cardinals to secure infamy. And for the Seahawks to solidify a date in Dallas for next week. Despite the season being a disaster for Arizona, they still desire to obliterate their own tank. They need any sort of momentum going into the offseason they can muster. This game has turned into a dead heat. A duel of desperation for Cardinals and Seahawks alike. Many mistakes were made, but Arizona uses a blocked punt to block their chance at a number one pick. Despite all odds, the Cardinals tie the game on the foot of Zane Gonzalez. With two minutes left, Russell Wilson does what he does best and goes into bailout mode with several spectacular passes. The Seahawks win, but don't fret Arizona, you've won a special prize. The first overall pick. Congratulations on your tank bowl. Step forward and receive your free bosa, or whatever you desire. The next stop is in the AFC West. There are two outcomes here. The Chiefs win in Oakland and clinch home field as the Chargers become fifth seed. If Kansas City somehow loses and the Chargers win, they get home field and the Chiefs become the fifth seed. A world where StubHub Center hosts a playoff game. The laughter that would be had. There will unfortunately be none as the Chiefs figured out you need to play some semblance of defense in the NFL. The remainder of the game was a brief lesson in Japanese imperialism. Completely dominating your foes, crushing their spirits, destroying everything of value, and abducting their women for the army's comforts. This wasn't a match, it was slaughter. Okay, Kansas City, we get it. You want the number one seed, just take it. The Raiders already have to deal with Gruden and hired a puppet on TV to be their GM. They're suffering more than enough. Despite the meaninglessness of this game for the Broncos, Vance Joseph is doing everything in his power to try and save his job. This is all for naught, as the Charger defense treated their offense like a golden corral. An all-you-can-eat buffet of skill players. They straight up feasted on the dead horse that is their season. Rivers may have had a sloppy game, but it didn't matter as Denver thanks the gods that weed is legal in their state. They're going to need it after this shit. Maybe the Chargers can get some of it too. Their traditional San Diego luck peeked out its ugly head again. They are the fifth seed in the conference despite having a stellar 12 and 4 campaign. Fuck you, Spanos. Such a lust for revenge. Oh! Our next trip takes us out to the NFC wildcard race where the Vikings control their own destiny but face a challenge in the Bears. Meanwhile, if Minnesota chokes again and the Eagles fly throughout the night, they will be the ones sneaking into the postseason. Do you believe in miracles, kids? First, the Eagles have to take care of their own business against a team probably starting the ball boy into few janitors at this point. Redskins, your season may have fallen to shit faster than the Aztec Empire, but you can at least take home one award. The Injury Bowl. Just be careful with it, it's fragile. Just like the spirit of every Washington fan out there. Well, the ones that haven't succumbed to apathy. They probably abandoned this shithole like anyone else, not an Eagles fan. Unsurprisingly, Philadelphia takes care of business and puts the Redskins out of their misery for another long off-season of discontent. Now all eyes are on Minnesota. The Vikings have a lot to play for. Another playoff berth, team pride, perhaps some jobs. It's been a very inconsistent and disappointing season, but that can all be erased with some January football. The Bears are tough, but they aren't at full strength on the road. If they put up a fight, they can win this. That would imply Minnesota put up any sort of fight. What I saw was one of the more heartless displays of football I have ever seen. I didn't see a team that wanted to reach a Super Bowl, but a team that chose to lay down on the ground and die. A team with all the talent in the world, but failed to do a goddamn thing offensively and couldn't stop the run. At this rate, you may as well have burned that 84 million. At least it could have kept you warm as the perennial failure consumes you whole. Oh look, the guy who's 5 and 25 against teams over 500 is teaching Adam Thielen how to run routes. Perhaps he can teach the rest of the team to show up as well. The Vikings go out, once again, with a whimper. It's time to add another notch to their illustrious legacy of failure. Are you kidding me? The season can't end like that! Oh yes, it can, Paul. In fact, it usually does. What a massive failure of a season for a team that had Super Bowl ambitions. Turns out throwing money at Kirk Cousins may have been a mistake. It looked good at the time, but then Washington chose to come with him. In reality, what killed them was another missed field goal. If Daniel Carlson makes this kick, they don't tie and probably get in. Of course, another field goal kills the Vikings. It always does. Or was it that game against Buffalo at home? 
Do we start calling for Mike Zimmer's head now? If you're in Philly, you know damn well what this means. The Eagles will get the chance to defend their title. They were looking like shit early on with some bad losses and a boatload of injuries. A painful loss to the Cowboys with a brutal schedule to end the year, but Hank, you did it. You got out of the desert. Now onward to the Windy City. The last division to be secured is the AFC North, as the Ravens can close out a remarkable return to prominence with a win against the Browns. If not in the Steelers' win, there will be another March of the Inzers as Baltimore drowns itself in the Chesapeake yet again. Cleveland holds a lot in the balance this week. Do they win to smite one of their arch rivals, or lose and smite one of their arch rivals? Telltale Games would have had a goddamn field day with this sort of game choice. For now, however, the Browns have no answers for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens' high-octane rushing attack. They storm out to an early lead, but the fear of choking it will always rear its ugly head here. Tyler Boyd still brings a sharp pain to the heart of every fan, and it seems to be continuing. Cleveland is trying to shed their Factory of Sadness label. They want a winning season by any means necessary. The Browns are coming back into the game as the Ravens are... Oh god, they're choking on offense again. Baker is feeling dangerous with Jarvis Landry making amazing catches. They've stopped them for now, but fourth down is upon us. The fate of the season lies in Cleveland's hands. A fourth and ten, and here they come. Mayfield's pass is intercepted by Mosley! Baltimore has gone from sinking into the ocean to rising higher than Mount Everest. The football gods have shown mercy on them. The Ravens rise to claim the AFC North. Who knew that something other than uninspired mediocrity at the QB position would lead the Ravens out of such a fate? You can thank the Steelers for falling apart, but these guys earned their spot. They're interesting going into January. Really goddamn interesting. As for the final playoff spot available, it's simple between the Colts and Titans as they play each other. Win or go home. If they somehow tie, the Steelers end up clinching the sixth seed. Knowing everything Pittsburgh's getting this spot, aren't they? If so, it's going to be harder for them as Marcus Mariota will not be playing this week. Turns out that stinger he suffered was more severe than once thought, and he may risk permanent damage if he tried to tough it out. Thus, Tennessee must rely on their new golden goose in Blaine fucking Gabbards. Oh boy. If anything, at least Indianapolis is impaling themselves on the same pike repeatedly by means of turnovers and penalties. This game is somewhat competitive despite the Colts dominating the stat sheet. Tennessee still has a chance. And honestly, that's all they need. Three receivers to the right side. And looks that way. Out of the pocket. Keeps his eyes downfield. Intercepted! Right, they have Blaine Gabbard as their QB. That'll kill off any optimism. Indianapolis finishes them off and you have another Titan season that's... Do I honestly have to say it? <laughs> Too inconsistent. That's what I call the Titans. A team that would smoke the Patriots and then fall to shit against the team like the Bill. That's never a recipe for success, no matter how many times you try to go for two. Now you wonder if Mariota can stay healthy enough to be the permanent solution. That's never a good question to have. In fact, this is a two-for-one special. This game also officially cancels the annual March of the Yinzers. Total and utter fucking failure. The entirety of the football world dances. The soap opera reaches an early end. I would grab my axe, but it was lost under the collapse. By process of elimination, the Colts are the last men standing. They have made it back to the playoffs. This is honestly a really goddamn good job by them. From going 1-5 with brutal losses of plenty to rattling off 9 of 10 wins thanks to a resurgent Andrew Luck. Once again, another very interesting team for January. I don't know if I'll do this sort of thing again, mainly because there were times I felt like I hit a wall in terms of writing and I don't want it to get stale. I'd say we can call this another failed prediction. Little did I know at that time that this NFL season would bring about, well, everything. The material was absolutely golden and the only thing I had to do was stay out of its way. With playoffs on the horizon, it's time to officially close the door on the 2018 NFL season. A year of twists, turns, ref ball, and few being able to kick a field goal with regularity. As always, I'd like to thank the NFL for such a season of wonders and glories for us to consume. I'd like to thank groups like SeatGeek, Global Test Market, and That's Good Sports for sponsoring this content from time to time. And I must thank the most vital part of sports ball, you. With you and whomever you force to watch this program with every Wednesday or Thursday made it more important to put the best possible product for you to enjoy. Next year, I'll be there. If the NFL doesn't send their goons to break my arm, Days of Our Steelers is on the way. There will be much salt. Onward to the playoffs. And now for a few words on the coaches that we lost on Black Monday. The butt fumble claims another victim as coach thanks to an utter lack of talent and no real direction for the organization. He did himself no favors by showing no progress over the last few years, though. On to the next four-year coach in New York. 
He thought he should have been fired after an awful performance against the Bears in Week 3. You got your wish, buddy. Ineffective at best, Cotter did nothing to inspire the NFL community. Back to the coordinator ranks with you. Oh, now you fire this guy! This shit should have happened three years ago after that implosion in the wildcard game against the Steelers. 16 years of nothing but playoff utility and an inability to control his players. It's too late for any sort of justice here. Now watch them hire Hugh Jackson and continue to be irrelevant. It's almost as if you shouldn't have hired this guy in the first place. A terrible mistake that was nowhere near a head coach and it showed repeatedly. Sadly, nothing will change in Denver until Elway is gone. See you back as a coordinator, Vance. When a coach is fired after only one year, someone fucked up big time. Either they botched the interview process or the coach is a fraud. The Cardinals were a disaster and the team needed a scapegoat for it. No denying Wilkes did a poor job, but was it really his fault that they're a lol cow? This guy's stock fell from one of the hottest coaching prospects in football to another uninspired retread. I will throw bubble screens on third and long in his honor. A guy who was hyped as a game changer, but like most hires for that franchise, did nothing but divide the locker room and force a mutiny. Some culture change, am I right? The football gods show no mercy. Amen. That is awesome. I could see it coming. I kind of felt they were going to come with that bootleg.